So the first thing I want to do is talk about is corridor settings. Uh, so in your Explorer, uh, in your underneath your open road standards, uh, there is a feature definition for corridors, uh, and it has multiple settings in it. Uh, the main ones I'm going to talk about right now. So if you just right click on the properties of one of your feature definitions for corridors, uh, there are multiple settings. Uh, and I'm going to concentrate on two of them uh, during this presentation. One is the processing of critical processing and critical sections, and the one another one is display settings. Uh, these are usually stored in your workspace in DGN Libs, and when you create a corridor, you can pick one to assign, and it copies it into your local file. So once that happens, you can make changes to the one in your local file and not affect the workspace and everything. So you can also copy, make copies of it. Uh, so if you want one that's not supported in your workspace and want to modify one to your liking, you can copy a feature definition into your local file, make the changes there. And uh, so you'll have one that's not necessarily in your uh, workspace. So let's talk about uh, each one of these. Uh, we've got multiple uh, uh, corridor settings here. And uh, before I really get into each one of them, these are all in there to help you speed up and uh, your processing. And also they are in there for when you get to the final stage where you're finishing up, you can switch them and make your model denser and uh, more uh, accurate because you're dropping templates at uh, certain intervals and everything like that. Um, so the first one I want to address is the uh, template uh, multiplier. Um, this, uh, this one right here is important for processing speed. So for instance, if you put in a template drop of 10, and I've got a multiplier of two. So when your the template is processed or the corridor is processed, the templates will actually drop at every 20 feet. And if you want them back at the 10, all you do is go to the feature definition and change it back to one and then reprocess the corridor and it will uh, drop them every 10 feet. So that's every template drop along a corridor. So it's a kind of a global a multiplier for that particular corridor or, or whatever corridors are using this uh, feature definition. So um, remember, it is applied to the corridor and everyone that uses this feature definition will have that multiplier. And if I go in and change that, I would need to make sure each one of those corridors are reprocessed that are that reside in that file. So uh, recommendations uh, basically is while designing and laying out your corridor is uh, use a multiply large enough to quickly process the corridor. I, I would not put in something like 100 because you're only get if your template drop says an interval of 10, you put 100 in, you're dropping a template every 1,000. So, you know, within reason. Um, so when your design is complete, you can actually go in and uh, change this to, you know, set it to one to uh, modify or have your templates more dense along your corridor. Um, so like I said earlier, you can copy, make a copy of the corridor feature definition and change the multiplier in the copy. And then all you have to do on the corridor is change the feature definitions. You don't have to dig into um, the feature definition itself. So either way you would like to do it. Horizontal car cardinal points and vertical cardinal points. Uh, one of the things that this does is if those are set to true, that means that uh, there will be a template dropped at every horizontal cardinal point if it's set to true and every 
vertical cardinal point if it's set to true. Um, be aware that if you have a car of vertical geometry uh, or profile, <clears throat> that is a, for instance, say you draped it on the existing ground or using the existing ground profile as your uh, uh, profile, be, be aware that the vertical cardinal point, if set to true, it's going to drop a template at every one of those PIs. Um, so if you have a lot of PIs in your vertical geometry, this can really slow you down if you have that set to true. So just be aware of that when you're using uh, a PI-based um, with no curves, PI-based profile that has no curves in it. It's just a bunch of PIs. So that can really speed you or slow you down or speed you up if you, uh, if you set it to false. Or if it's set to true, it can slow you down. Uh, horizontal cardinals, uh, same thing on that. If you have a horizontal alignment that is just a bunch of PIs and you run it down it, uh, if it's set to true, it's going to drop one at every PI, which may be very dense. And so just be aware that those two can affect you when you have a lot of PIs. We'll move on to the next one. External control points. This one can bite you. And the reason why I say that is this will, any uh, horizontal uh, control constraint, any point control uh this applies to those, and uh, if it's set to tr if it's set to false, it doesn't mean that the point controls or the horizontal constraints don't uh, work. They do, uh, but when it's set to true, uh, what you, um, it will drop a template at each PI or each cardinal point on those point control elements or those horizontal constraint elements. Um, so this applies to both the horizontal and the vertical, uh, of those, uh, of those, uh, uh, constraints or controls. So let me give you a, an example of this. So I've got a corridor here and I've got a, uh, horizontal constraint, right? Or a point control element that I'm going to use. And just to make it simple here what i want to do is let's look at my let's look at my feature definition on my corridor real quick so at this time right here what i've got is my external uh, control points are set to false all right so i'm going to go in and create a point control so i'm going to locate the corridor like normal and we'll just limit it to uh this location to this location. And I don't need a description right now. So we're going to put it in on the left edge of pavement. Uh, so I, I just picked that from the list there. We're going to do a horizontal, control types linear. And we're going to pick my element here. And uh, we're not going to do secondary alignment and no offsets on that either. So as my corridor processes here, you'll see that the left edge of pavement will jump out to that element. Now, if I go to my feature definition, I'll go to properties of it, and I set my external control points to true, and then all I need to do is let's go reprocess the corridor, and you will see that in that area where I had that control that I had a lot of PIs on it, you'll see that the drop interval is very, very extreme. So um, having it set to false doesn't mean the controls won't work. Having it set to true means that it's going to drop one at every PI. So if you have controls like from survey or draped elements that have a lot of PIs in them, you may want to set those to set the external control to false and then if you want to set it back to true later on that's fine but for as processing and and doing your corridor it will probably help to have it to false to start with let's talk about densifying horizontal and vertical uh, geometry so densify horizontal and densify vertical 
uh, looks at the horizontal curves and densifies your um, template drop around those curves or across those curves. So uh, you have horizontal and the densify horizontal value is what we call the stroking tolerance or the it's really the uh, mid chord height. So as the t uh, we move along the curve, the mid chord height gets to that value, we'll stop, place a template and keep doing that along the curve. So you can imagine a very low number on the mid chord height can cause a lot of template drops around the curves. So if you have a very curvy alignment and both horizontal and vertical and you have these set to true, um, you can see where you could get a lot of template drops through that area. Now you can have all the values in there set and turn them to false while you're designing and laying out the corridor. Uh, and then when you get to a certain point, you may want to turn them back to true if you want horizontal uh, uh, horizontal densification for horizontal curves and uh, same with vertical. Um, so that can slow you down if you have them set to true and you have a very small number in there. 0 0.07, 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.05, even down to 0 0.01 should be good. But if you start going 0 0.005 and something like that, it can put a lot of template drops in around your curves. So recommendations would be set them to false uh, while designing and um, you can set them back to true for your final and everything like that. And also just use a reasonable number for the stroking values. Don't get too, too small because it can really affect the uh, performance of that. Enable clipping. So most people, while they're designing and everything, uh, if you, especially if you're using civil cells and stuff like that for intersections, things like that, um, you know, you, you're, you're wanting, wanting to clip out the corridor. However, while you're laying these things out, say you have, you know, um, uh, 15 intersections or 15 driveways or something like that uh, within, you know, a, a short space, it's better to go ahead and get them all in and tell it to clip the corridor. But if you have this set to false, the corridor processing, well, first of all, it's not going to happen while you're placing the intersections. But when you get uh, all of them in, you can st and you have other work to do on the corridor, you can have this set to false so it's not clipping. Uh, then when you want it to clip, you can turn it to uh, true and then reprocess the corridor and it'll clip out where it's supposed to. A lot of people actually turn this uh, on while they're placing the particular intersection or driveway or something like that and then turn it back to false after they've uh, figured out that it's clipping correctly and it's what they want. They'll turn it back to false just to speed up your processing while you're working on other parts of your corridor. Um, uh, also too, if you have a lot of them, uh, there, there's other ways uh, using template drops and I'll actually go through that in a little later instead of using clipping. Uh, so um, I'll touch base on that um, in a little bit. Oh, and uh, the last one on there was, was the enable perpendicular template drops. All that really means is um, it really doesn't affect the processing, but what it does do is if you, for instance, if you want to model a bridge most templates are all, to, if, if that's set to false, your templates are dropped vertically from the profile grade. Uh, that's the way it's always worked. It works like that. Now, the enable perpendicular template drops means that it will rotate the template in the vertical plane to be perpendicular to the profile grade. For, for instance, a bridge, uh, a bridge, G, uh, bridge beams and everything, are not designed uh, vertically, they're actually designed perpendicular from the profile grade. So the cross section uh, are different between the two. So that really doesn't affect your uh, performance much at all. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, 
please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you, and see you next time.